when I was around maybe seven years old, I remember my mother coming out of the house uh, with a gun in her hand and she stopped the milk lorry and uh, told the milkman to clear off. And then all of us kids, I mean these were kids, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, we took those crates of milk bottles that were empty and we started filling them up with petrol and sugar and cotton wool and then and then a thread. And you, you and, were doing it? Yeah, we made, we made petrol bombs um, and all those crates were then stored in my back entryway. So Did you know what you were doing? Yeah. How old are you? Seven years old. Yeah, seven or eight years old. And, and I, I imagine there was close to a hundred petrol bombs. And then a few nights later, I'm sitting on the stairs that go up to my bedroom, I'm just sitting on the stairs because my father's having a meeting with some men, and these men probably were, you know, late teens, early twenties. And I heard him say, um, there's a street and you can see it from here. Um, and, and the people, uh, row homes, all these row homes and they're, they're Catholics and I want you to burn them out, right? So that he was giving them the orders to go down sometime in the night, in the darkness, throw the petrol bombs in through the living room windows and burn these families out. And it wasn't, it was a few days later, I'm on the way to school and I could see all the smoke coming out of these homes as I walked to school. And I knew then, well, that's, that was my father. And my father made that happen. That was his work. Um, and that was the first time that I began to question why. I wasn't proud of my father at that moment. I wasn't ready to tell people, oh, my dad, you know, managed to burn the Catholics out of their row homes. Um, I don't think I was ashamed of it either. I was just stunned by it and saying, why, why would we do this? Why am I to hate Catholics? But that was an example of his his influence um, on, a, on a small scale. Suppose we could bring your dad in the room right now. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm conjuring this image in my mind of mm -hmm. let, let's get the seven-year-olds involved. Yeah. You know, so let's pull him into the room now and say, you know, wh why, why would you think that was a good idea? I mean, let's, let's just say that your cause in some sense is just, and I don't think yeah. we're willing to say that, but let's just, for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. say the cause is just. But still, you're going to pull a seven-year-old into this? Mm -hmm. what, what, what would he have said? Well, he would certainly understand the term discipleship. Um, that was a popular term even back then in his own Christian upbringing. And he would transfer that over to to terrorism, bringing young boys, and particularly young boys, and, and begin to groom them so that by the time they're 16, they're ready to go into action. So the terrorist organizations rely on numbers, large numbers. Um, they rely largely with, with males. Now, there's some roles for the female even within the terrorist organization, some I know of, but he was grooming me I, I was, in my father's eyes, to be the next Billy Stevenson, to pick up the gauntlet and carry it on uh, for him. And Did he saw all my mates as, 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 as potential um, members of the UVF as well. Do you know if any of those who were, whose homes were hit by those petrol bombs, were any of them killed? I don't think so, but I don't know the answer to that. I would doubt anyone was killed. Um, that particular, I mean, that particular burning happened to get a lot of recognition, um, probably because of its geographical location to the Shankle. Um, so there would be a lot about that on, on YouTube today, you know, that, that burning. This was, in what year was this? 19, I would say probably around 1970. 
So I want to come back. You just referred yeah. to the Shankle, and, and we'll talk about that, yeah. sort of what it is, and also as a symbol. Yeah. You're seven years old. You're obviously not thinking at a sophisticated level. You're doing what you're told. You just saw your mom with a gun. If for no other reason, you just you do what you're told. Yeah. You know, um, and that's obviously a memory that sticks with you. Mm -hmm. um, filling up those bottles. Is that memory, has that memory also been, is that memory still a burden to you? No. Um, I think initially, Preston, I enjoyed the whole exercise. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the I, Yeah, I enjoyed the smell of the petrol. Um, I really liked the 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 the, the, the project. Um, I was able to complete from the beginning to the end. I mean, we produced a petrol bomb. Um, it wasn't until a few days later where I see the damage that it caused that I began to think why you know mm -hmm. why did I enjoy that so much and then with my mother with the gun I remember my mother I still see her coming out with that gun and at that time I thought what's she doing with a gun you know I should be the one with the gun I'm old enough and I'm the male I should be holding the gun and it wasn't long after that that I my father gave me my own gun I was probably seven years old and I, it was a 38 special and it was wrapped up in a white handkerchief and my father told me that that's your gun Billy but the only time I want you to use that is to protect your mother and your sister and it's up in this the kitchen cupboard there um, so I, I had now uh, sort of graduated I was recognized as um, a young man at the age of seven wow. who was capable or at least trusted to use a gun. At any point, um, did you feel yourself walking that path of picking up the torch, so to say, and becoming the warrior for the next generation? I mean, at this point, you're being drafted, and there's not much you can do about it. Yeah. But did you ever feel yourself exercising your own volition and saying, okay, well, this is the path I'll go in? Yeah, I mean, at that point, when you when you are trusted with your own gun, I feel at this point I'm I'm light years ahead of most young boys on the Shankill, and it's because I'm the son of Billy Stevenson, so I have something here. You know, it's just like a badge of honor or Almost something. A status? Yeah, status symbol. Wow. Um, but not long after that, uh, my two cousins. Um, were sitting in the living room talking to my father and when I heard them tell the story of how they killed two Catholic men that was a turning point for me because I looked at my cousins as heroes they were amazing people and it dawned on me wait a minute how could they how could they have killed someone you know so my my impression of them changed drastically from wonderful male cousins, leaders, um, heroes, to scary. Um, I'm really disappointed in that. I'm really disappointed in them. Now, I don't know how that, how that came to me. I don't, maybe it's my conscience was beginning to grow a little bit and have a maybe beginning to weigh in, you know. But it was at that point um, that I realized that's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. I don't want to be like my father. I don't want to be like my cousins. There's got to be another way. There has to be another way. And so the gun then became uh, not interested at all. Never went to see it, never held it. My interest in it just disappeared. <laughs> 